or his revelation described in the New Testament. For example, Jonah may be seen as the type of Christ in that he emerged from the fish's belly and thus appeared to rise from death. And uh, Jesus says that himself. He's the one who uh, quoted that himself. Jonah. Uh, the story of Jonah... I'm reading right here. The story of Jonah and the fish in the Old Testament offers an example of typology. In the Old Testament book of Jonah, Jonah told his shipmates to throw him overboard, explaining that God's wrath would pass if, jo if Jonah was sacrificed, and that the sea would become calm. Jonah then spent three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish before it spat him onto dry land. Typological interpretation. Highlight, highlight. Typological interpretation of the story holds that if it prefigures Christ's burial and resurrection, the stomach of the fish represented Christ's tomb. As Jonah exited from the fish after three days and three nights, so did Christ rise from his tomb on the third day. In the New Testament, Jesus invokes Jonah in this manner of, of a type. He says, excuse me, as the crowds increased, Jesus said, this is a wicked, gener this is a wicked generation. It asks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. And he says that in Luke 11, 29. Let's go there. None, uh, let's see. No sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah, for just as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so the Son of Man will be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise in judgment of the people, uh, with the people of this generation and condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon and see something greater than Solomon is here. The people of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation condemn it because they repented at the proclamation of Jonah and say, and see something greater than Jonah is here. Um, he also, it's not just Jonah, it's not just Joseph. Uh, let's see, that's the example of Jonah, example of Isaac. Here's Joseph. All these bullet points, both are rejected by their own people, both became servants, both are betrayed for silver, both are falsely accused as false witnesses, uh, both attain stations at the right hand to the respective thrones, Joseph, is Joseph at Pharaoh's throne and Christ at the throne of God. Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, and Jesus was about the same age, according to the Bible, when he began his ministry. Uh, money and goods were not able to, be, to save the people in time of famine. They had to sell themselves. The same notions are discussed throughout the New Testament. Both provided for the salvation of Gentiles. Joseph provided a physician salvation Excuse me, J Joseph provided a physical salvation in preparing for famine, while Christ provided the deeper spiritual salvation. Joseph married an Egyptian wife, bringing her into Abrahamic lineage. Joseph's, excuse me, Christ's relationship with the church is also described in marriage terms in the New Testament. A direct parallel with Joseph ruling all over all of Egypt that only Pharaoh would be greater in the throne is repeated in 1 Corinthians 15 in regards to Jesus, and both suffered greatly, and through patience and humbleness were exalted greatly by God, who gave in abundance all things over time. Whew. So, uh, you're asking why I'm drawing this book about Joseph? <laughs> uh, that is why. That is... Uh, in order to 
bring light to the theory of typology. So, so there you go. That was a long-winded explanation for a short question. Uh, phew. CK Moore, hello, how are you? Thank you for your sub the other day. Uh, let me give you a shout out. Shout out at CK Moore. Hey, C.K. Moore, please, uh, to me, uh, I mean, uh, let me introduce you to Simon Toyo Sports 71. Simon Toyo Sports, let me introduce you to C.K. Moore. Both of you are Christian streamers. Just put out a new time lapse on YouTube. Awesome. Feel free to go uh, look at C.K. Moore's YouTube. He's a digital oil painter, digital oils. Uh, what's the name of that software that you're using? All right, here we go. Let's draw. We are drawing Joseph. So I hit the number 333 in followers today. I wasn't expecting that number. I was not, uh, I was, you know, I, it kind of like snuck up on me. I, I was totally, I totally forgot. How biblical that number would have been. I should have set a goal for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I've been, here's what I've been thinking about recently. God's love for us. How does God uh, how does God show his love for us? You can get many, many answers to that question, right? How, what scriptures would you choose to show how God loves us? I'll give you some time to think about it. Uh... Examples like, let's see, uh, how Jesus handled the woman caught in adultery. Uh, 
He said, I don't condemn you, but leave your life of sin. Uh, let's see. Oh, sorry for ignoring the chat, because the chat, um, I have a new setup here. My work computer is taking up most of my desk, and my streaming computer is about 18 inches away, further than usual, so... This is what I get for being responsible and actually having to have a job. Okay, yeah, there you go. In the Old Testament, God forgave people who did not prepare and allowed them to celebrate the Passover. I think that that was like a month and a half after the Passover, right? It, was, it wasn't just like a day after the Passover, it was some time had, had passed over. Pardon the pun, pardon the... Some time had passed since the Passover, and if I remember correctly, do you have the, the reference when that happened? So, the way, uh, for, in my mind, why that's important, why is that significant, is because uh, God wasn't just, or isn't, still isn't, uh, just, doesn't just care about the rules. but makes exception for the rules as well. God is flexible enough to love us in order to... Oh, you know what? No wonder my brush is so... Oh, that's the eraser. Okay. CK says it was the second Passover. Okay. Uh, you think it was Second Chronicles? Don't have the chapter on hand. I think he cares about intent quite a lot. Right, exactly. Um, if you think of the, I think the opposite of that in example would be the Pharisees, how they cared about uh, how many, uh, I'm thinking of a scripture where Jesus says you take a tenth of your cumin and you take a tenth of your spices. You lay heavy burdens on the people. Uh, the Pharisees, and don't get me wrong, uh, I believe that the, I've learned that the Pharisees uh, were not bad people. They just wanted to, they were doing their best. to follow God's law. They were doing the, the best that they knew how to, to follow the, the law of the Torah, 